All right, so now let's look at chemical reactions in aqueous solutions. I have here a solution of lead nitrate. It's a clear solution, and I'm not surprised because from my solubility table, uh, nitrates are always soluble. And I have some sodium iodide, and I'm not surprised that that's uh, dissolved in water because iodide ions are also soluble. And um, if I mix these two, I see a beautiful yellow solid forming in the uh, beaker. A murky yellow solid. First thing, whenever you mix two solutions and get a murky solid, it's a precipitation reaction. Precipitation reaction, sometimes referred to as double displacement, at least in this case. And in the precipitation reaction, the solid that forms and looks murky is called the precipitate. So you need to know what the precipitate is. Now what's going on is that in the aqueous solutions of the ions, the lead nitrate and the sodium iodine, because they're aqueous, their ions pop apart and float around independently in both solutions. But when I mix them together, something new can happen. The lead, which was with the nitrate, now has the opportunity to float around and run into the iodine. And the uh, nitrate ion, missing the negative charge, the nitrate ion is free to float around and run into the sodium from the sodium iodide. And when that happens with the sodium and nitrate, not too much is going to happen because those two, sodium and nitrate, always make an I, uh, a soluble ionic compound, so the ions will still be floating around. However, the iodide ion, when it runs into lead, it'll make a compound that should be soluble, but lead's an exception makes it insoluble. They will stick, and they will form a solid compound, and that's our precipitate. We'll write it out this way. We'll say that when the aqueous lead runs into the aqueous iodine, we will get PbI2. Since it's a murky solid compound, we're going to write it as a solid. Okay. And then the leftover ions, the sodium and the nitrate, are still going to be aqueous, but we're going to write them as the compound they would make if we had removed the water. That'll be NaNO3 aqueous. Now, of course, these are written as though they were formulas in solid compounds together. But we know that when these um, soluble compounds are aqueous, the ions pop apart. So we can draw that in this form as well. The PbI2 do not pop apart when they are solids. They stay together. So we're going to leave this as a solid. But we can draw the sodium nitrate here the way it is in solution. Does it fit? It almost fits. Okay. Now, the final thing to do here, the final thing to do is to balance these equations. If we have one lead atom over here and one lead atom over here, they're balanced. If we have one iodide ion here and we have two there, we're going to have to have two of these to balance the iodine. And we're going to have to have two of these when we write them as separate ions. Um, let's see, the sodium, there's two sodium there. So we have to put a two there to get enough sodium. And we're going to put a 2 down here Oops, I'm in the way, to reflect the fact that we've got two sodium ions 
and we have two nitrate ions there. It's a little hard to see the nitrate, it looks like that. Okay. So that's a precipitation reaction. What we do with precipitation reactions is we always mix together soluble ionic compounds and then we trade the partners. That's what we mean by double displacement. We put lead with iodine, we put nitrate with sodium, and we look at our solubility rules in this table here to try to figure out if the new partners, when you switch them, will be soluble or insoluble. Now it's a precipitation reaction if the partners are swapped and you get an insoluble ionic compound. And um, uh, insoluble ionic compound. And the other ions are always still aqueous. It just uh, works out that way. Now I also need to mention that I drew two equations that say the same thing. We can draw this in different forms. <coughs> Pardon me. We can draw it both as we can draw it both as a molecular equation. Hard for me to fit it in here. It's right here. Molecular equation. Okay. Molecular equation. Or we can draw it as in this form, which we call the uh, well, where am I going to put it? I'm going to put it right there. The ionic equation. I'll abbreviate equation EQ, the ionic equation. Um, they are both saying the same chemical reaction. It's just that this one is pointing out all the independent uh, species, and this is not. This is putting them into the compound they would be in if the water had not been there for the uh, chemical reaction. Now an interesting thing about this is that you, you can see from the ionic equation that we have lead 2 plus and iodine coming together to make a compound, but we also have a nitrate ion and we have a sodium ion. I did this wrong, there has to be two of these. Sorry, I didn't balance it. So we have a nitrate ion and a sodium ion, and when they come together, they are still a sodium ion and still a nitrate ion, actually two of them. That means that the sodium and the nitrate didn't actually do anything in the chemical reaction. So we're going to have a third way of looking at um, um, precipitation reactions and other reactions as well. We'll have a uh, molecular equation. We'll have an ionic equation that shows all the ions that are separate and what's come together. And then we'll often have a different type of ionic equation. that just shows the ions that are reacting. So in this case, it's the lead reacting with the iodine, iodide, I should say, ion. And that's going to form lead iodide. Oops, I'm in the way. Okay. Now, to distinguish between these different types of ionic equations, we're going to call this the net ionic equation, and we're going to call this the complete ionic equation. So what I'd like you to be able to do is to mix two aqueous ionic compounds, predict the precipitate, if any, and the aqueous compound that's left over, that would form from the leftover ions, write them out as a complete ionic equation showing all the separate ions for the aqueous soluble compound, showing the precipitate as a solid, and showing the remaining aqueous ions as separate ions, and then write the uh, net ionic equation showing just the ions that are reacting to form the precipitate. Now there's a few other words we need to use to describe this. 
one we said already, okay, it precipitates, and I'll put that right here. The precipitate's just going to be the solid compound that forms when you um, mix your your compounds. And the other one is we are going to call the well, get in the picture. We are going to call the ions that are not actually in the net ionic equation spectators. So can we see that? Yeah. So we are going to call we are going to call the ions that are not in the complete the net ionic equation spectators because in fact they didn't do anything in the reaction they're sort of like spectators at a football game they're not part of the game they're just watching now if I come back to my aqueous solution. This is actually a pretty famous reaction because lead's a terrible uh, toxin, and if you have lead in your drinking water, then you are concerned that uh, you might be poisoned. So what you do is you take a little bit of sodium iodine, you take your tap water, and you pour it in. And happily, no yellow precipitate forms, so I know it's safe to drink my tap water, although I don't think I'll drink the sodium iodine. Many famous reactions have occurred, uh, have been used, I should say, uh, as uh, precipitation reactions, for, often for looking for different uh, soluble ions. Another famous one in addition to the lead iodide reaction happens when you have a chloride ion and you mix it with You mix it with I found it. Some silver nitrate. Now both silver nitrate dissolved in water here in the stropper bottle and sodium chloride are both aqueous, but we can see uh, aqueous ionic compounds, but we can see that there is some kind of precipitation reaction going on when I add the um, the silver nitrate to the sodium chloride. Okay. 